I'm going to be talking today a little bit about types of things that you can do um, in your community um, as, you know, as somebody that cares about your community. And uh, hopefully it will be very much action focused. Um, I do want to acknowledge everyone here that has lost someone, um, anyone that has struggled with mental illness or thoughts of suicide. Um, and, and all of you here, I think, because you care um, and they're, therefore are providing love and support for our families and communities. So I wanna thank you all for being here. Um, and also acknowledge that I do receive some funding from the National Institute for Health, as well as the Subs, uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit about safe messaging, um, some key prevention activities, and then um, I'll share more than one personal action step, but hopefully you'll take one away that at least you like and can try out. Um, so this is what we call the Good Vibes Map. I did not name it. Um, we did some activities bringing youth from across our state together and said, what would you like to see? What is needed? Um, this does appear in the uh, state strategic plan um, where we talk about this. Um, and this is what they were asking for. This is what our youth um, across the state want to see. Um, they'd like to see more um, training and education for them with youth speakers um, in the classrooms, focusing on wellness, as well as suicide prevention. And they also felt that the adults need to be trained. Um, two years ago, our state passed a law um, and now the Department of Education is required to train its teachers and administrators um, in suicide prevention. And that is happening now. Um, and they would like, our youth are saying, yes, we're on the right track with that. This is something that they would like to see. They wanna see more awareness being raised. Um, yesterday, Brent talked a lot about stigma um, and part of the ways that we can, can raise awareness and reduce stigma. Um, are doing some of these social media campaigns, getting the word out there, having people talk about suicide, taking part in Suicide Prevention Month, um, and sharing and promoting different um, ways to share the, the crisis text line, which they really like, that 741-741 number where they can text um, when they're feeling stressed or in crisis, um, and also you know attending fairs. They also see that we need to promote um, youth leadership, right? We want to move this forward, um, but we need youth voice involved in that. Um, and they need to do that with their mentors. They have to work side by side. They want to also start us really early. They said, don't wait till we're in high school to start talking about this. Start talking about it in elementary school. Um, and interestingly, that our number one evidence-based strategy for suicide prevention is a program for preschool children. The number one evidence-based program is a program for preschool children. It's called the Good Behavior Game. And it basically reinforces people for those positive behaviors that they have. And the more we do that early, the fewer suicide deaths there are 30 years out, the fewer bullying incidents that occur, the fewer arrests related to violence, the less drug use there is. There's so many good things, but we're not starting suicide prevention activities in high school. We're starting those really early. And the kids recognize that. These are our teens that we're saying it as well. Um, we need to make counseling more available to, to youth um, with and without um, having to ask their families. Again, our youth asked for it. They brought it up in different venues. Um, and actually the legislature did pass a few years ago an ability for youth to start receiving counseling, talk therapy types of services without parental permission. Uh, because sometimes parents are involved, right? And they may have other reasons for not including their kids, or they're just not ready to talk about it. So 14 and up. They also see themselves, um, and I love um, how much our, our kids are willing to take on. I mean, they really see themselves as the, with the ability to, to not only change their community, but change the world. Um, and so let's tap into that energy, right? And let them change the culture. That's what they want. They want it to be okay to share. They want wellness centers. They want a bunch of different things that allow this to be a part of the conversation. Um, and then finally, um, and we'll talk more about this, you'll see these words, but they want people to listen, 
We had a listening um, skills session yesterday. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about today as well. Aloha for the real aloha, not hello, goodbye, aloha, but where we're really practicing aloha. Um, that our supportive adults need to be there. Um, that friends and family um, provide that attention and the time to do that. Um, and that there's a place for schools as well. So this is what our kids want. So if, if there's any question on what the youth are interested in, I mean, this aligned completely with the work that our um, suicide prevention adults talked about. Um, the people with the most training in the state coming together from all these different avenues, we're like almost exactly lined up, uh, use different words, but lined up with what needs to be done. And they called this good vibes. <laughs> So what are the safe messaging strategies that we need? Well, oftentimes when we talk about safe messaging, um, we do it from a place where we, we are um, trying to notify the media about how they should cover those stories. Um, and we're looking at what not to do, a lot of things about not, what not to do. Um, and in the program um, that we work with in Sources of Strength, which is a national-based program that's actually being used internationally, um, as well as best practice on how do you message. Uh, if you tell people what not to do, sometimes they don't remember, right? Or um, I always say like, oh, if we say, um, you know, what we wanna do is stop something. Like we say, stop running down the hall. What happens with kids? They just charge down the hall, right? To get away, because now they know they're in trouble. So it almost sends the opposite message of what we're trying to do. Um, and so these are the safe messaging, what you should do types of things. Um, for our youth in particular, they often wanna draw attention to an issue by focusing on the trauma, the drama, the sad, the shock factor, and using kind of those negative images to bring people in. But for people struggling, they might get stuck there, right? And we don't want people stuck in that aspect of it. So we're turning that around. So to actually do the safe messaging, we want to have those hope, help, strength, healing types of messages. So the positive messages. So we wanna say that there's something we can do. We know there's something we can do. We want to include information about the warning signs and where to get help. And that effective programs are out there, right? We wanna talk about all the great things that are happening locally. And we have a whole session on that later. Um, and also we wanna talk about resilience and recovery. So if we focus on these positive things, if we bring these positive aspects in, then that's how we can share those messages. That's how we can reduce stigma, right? Because these are positive things to be talking about. And when we start spreading, they're positive. We're still talking about mental health and mental illness and the need for help. But we're talking about it in a way that says, guess what? There's these great things out there that can and, and will make a change. So I'm gonna share four key messages. Um, originally I had three and then I changed it to four and I know four is kind of a lot. Uh, usually I think people can remember three things. So, okay, if you remember three, that's fantastic. The first thing I wanna share um, is the word aloha. And you'll see this come up over and over and again. It's actually the core value in the state suicide prevention plan. And the quote that I have here, I wanna read because it's exactly as it was worded. It's in quotes because I've lifted it right out of the state's plan. And it says, aloha is the essence of relationships and with each person is important to every other person for collective existence. Aloha means to hear what is not said, to see, what cannot be seen and to know the unknowable, right? Aloha is our connection to each and every person that lives and visits the islands. Uh, we, we overuse this word so much, right? And yet it's our core of our existence. It's what, it's what brings people to the islands. It's what the indigenous culture has shared with the world. Um, and, and we need to recognize that and build off of that and be that. 
So I was at, um, I think it was one of my first conferences um, for suicide prevention, it was a local conference. Um, and Mr. Pono Shim was there. Um, and I kind of think of him as Mr. Aloha when I, I think of that. And, and so when I was gonna talk about this, I was like, oh my gosh, it popped into my head. And then I was like, oh my gosh, when something pops into your head, here we have this first action that we can do. So I was at this conference with him. I was sitting at a table, they were round tables, which is great. Um, and he was kind of talking about the alo what Aloha means and, the, um, and, and kind of an Aloha protocol, how we can bring that to the work that we do. Um, and he started talking about this, like um, this phone a friend, right? Like, so win a million dollars, <laughs> right? What, is, what does that mean to phone a friend? Um, and, and he shared, and I'm gonna share with you kind of my experience with that um, as it progressed. So at this particular event, um, he said, have you ever had, have you ever had that instance when somebody said, you know, it's, all of a sudden somebody just comes to mind Right, and if you think now, like, oh, does anybody come to mind? Somebody maybe you haven't had contact with for a while, or they've just been on your mind for a while. Um, and what do you do with that? Right, it's like, oh, you know, usually we're busy with our lives and things happening and going on, and and we just let it pass us by. But what if, what if we take that moment as a sign that we need to reach out and share some aloha? And so as he was talking, it was interesting. And I'm going to say that I did this too. I was not fully present in the conversation because I'm like, oh, someone popped in my head when you just said this. And I got on my phone. I was like, whoa, I'm going to text them right now. You're right. I need to share my aloha. So, and, and I was not the only one. 10 people at my table and eight of us were already on our phone because he was talking about like, oh, you should reach out to this person. Um, so no, we weren't totally listening to what he said. It took a while for it to sit, kind of sit in and percolate. Um, and throughout the pandemic, I've really changed what I think this means and how I implement it. And he actually talked about like, this is about reaching out in person, you know, if you can set up a time to visit that person. So call them and set up a time and like really see what's going on with them. Not just like, oh, I'm thinking of you and then be done. And that's the end of that. Um, and I started writing letters. Um, I haven't done that in forever, where I'm sending people notes and cards and postcards. Um, and it's like, anytime someone's name throughout the entire pandemic, when I've thought of somebody, I've sat down and I've wrote them something saying, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about this. I'm sharing something that happened with us together. Um, I'm checking in with them. I'm setting up times. We've done some Zoom calls. Um, and I've really, for me, I was like, I think this is what he was actually talking about. I mean, I heard it over 10 years ago and I do. It was like, okay, every time I was kind of texting people, but I know that's not what was meant. I really feel like the connection has become so much more. So when that name pops into your head, when, take action on it, do something, call them, send them a note, set up a time to get together, depending on you know, what the situation involves. Share your aloha. So this is an activity that we actually did with Maui um, youth. It came together a couple years ago. Um, we did some safe messaging training with, with Maui youth. Um, and, and I share this with you because for so many of the youth, again, spontaneously, spontaneously driven by their own messaging, they were told to use safe messaging, they came up with um, aloha and what it means. Um, and so this was one of the groups. And so what we did was we talked about what was in safe messaging. Um, I did not share the message was one of the messages was Aloha. They came up with that um, on their own. Um, and then the groups met in their in in smaller groups and developed this. Um, this actually is from Hana. Um, the, the, the youth from Hana actually all knew these Olalo no Eau. Um, and this is what they thought was core in terms of you know, different things that spoke to them. Um, and from that, we developed um, social media. Um, let's switch to the next one. <laughs> so you can see two of them. Um, so this is what it looks like for social media. Um, and they included, again, lifeline numbers, right? So here's the crisis number, 1-800-273-TALK, that's 8255. Um, 
you can text Aloha to, to, the, to the text line at 741741. They identified the Maui County um, Suicide Prevention Task Force, and then their images um, became digital as opposed to, to drawn on, on paper. Um, so really important, right? This Aloha just came through and it was on many, many different ones. I'm just giving you two examples here um, on the screen, but, um, and what Aloha means. Um, and for example, um, the, the one with the plumeria, share your Aloha. Um, it's the approach and how you make the connection. It's the listening. It's the opportunity to help others. It's providing hope and it's showing gratitude. I mean, wow, did they understand Aloha? Right, like just look at what they're sharing, right? And then um, for the Hana ones, you know, they're like, it's, it has to do with kindness and happiness and being thankful. So again, they're tapping into the gratitude and moving forward and helping others move forward and putting away those angry thoughts, right? So how do they understand this? What do they, where do they, where does this come from? How is it so deeply ingrained and how can you share it? So that's what we're asking you to do as well, to think about how you can. All right. So we do have members from our Mental Health America of Hawaii team here. They actually have a curriculum that they train uh, youth um, in and uh, statewide. And I don't know how many they've done. Thousands and thousands of youth have been trained over the years um, called Ho'olohe Pono, which means listen well. Um, and it is a youth um, suicide and bullying prevention curriculum. So when we think of that listening well, um, and again, the kids really can articulate what does it mean to listen well? And this is one of our messages that we want to share and why we focused on some of this compassionate listening skills, but it's that full body listening, right? Like how do we listen with our ears? Well, to me, that's like, okay, we're here to, to hear it, right? That means we can't be talking because when we're talking, we can't hear, right? So to use your ears, to listen with your ears is to hear what is being said with our eyes and all of that type of thing in terms of how we engage. And again, remember when people are struggling, they may not even be looking at you and it may not be appropriate to look at you, but we need to be, be looking at them. We're looking at them for a bunch of different reasons, right? It shows that we're paying attention to what they're saying but it also shows that we can try and read all those different cues, right? Whether they raise their eyebrows, whether they're sad, whether they're uncomfortable, um, right? All of that's done with our eyes. Um, that we're giving them our complete and total focus, right? We're present in that moment without distraction. Um, we're there for as long as they need us to be there, um, right? This is not the, hey, how you doing walking by the hall, right? Where everybody always is fine, right? There's no other answer. Because if you're walking by and you're clearly moving and you ask how you're doing, no one can pause and say, I'm having a tough time or can you talk, right? Because your, your, your own body language is telling them everything about what you're doing is saying, I'm not here for that kind of conversation right now, right? This is the, I'm gonna sit down with you and we're in a place to have a conversation and it's a comfortable place and that, and then I can say, how are you doing? We need to listen with our heart. That's that empathy. Um, I have to say for the vast majority, uh, I do not know what they've gone through, but I can feel for them, right? I can feel and I know, and everybody's gone through tough times. Some people have gone through just such hard times where the hard times way outnumber the good times, um, but we need our heart to feel for that, right? We need to, to be empathetic. Um, we listen with our, our mind, right? To process that, try and understand that. And we actually also listen with our gut, right? That's do we, how do we feel with this? Um, so again, these are all the skills that we learned yesterday um, in our compassionate listening and it's just, just put them down in one place, but they're those looking for the emotions, not interrupting, right? Getting the key facts, saying what we see, all these different skill sets. Listening is, is something we have to practice. Um, and I have to tell you, I am not a good listener. Um, I have 
been working on these skills, I'm a tell person, right? Some people they're like, um, it works fine. I'm just telling you things right now. <laughs> this is like easy for listening. It's like, I have to really focus and pay attention. We can learn the skills. So naturally, maybe I'm not a good listener, but with practice, I have become a much better listener. Um, and, and that's what we need to do. We need to be conscious of all these different things. And so for me, because I'm interested and I know I'm a tell person, um, it leads to me asking like more uh, yes, no kinds of questions. They're really quick, but it doesn't get you very much detail. Um, and so I'm like, okay, you're a tell person. So I say, oh, tell me more. That's what I need to do. I need to get the other person to do what I usually do, which is what? Tell me, tell me, right? And so that's my, my trick. Um, but everybody's got to figure out what works for themselves. And again, I keep these little images in mind, this whole body thinking. This is one um, that one of our uh, Suicide Prevention Task Force members developed, Uncle Ish, um, to listen with your heart, mind, gut, and body. Ike, Na'ao, and Kino, right? Again, whole body listening. So when you think about Ho'olohepono, our message, right? Then you're thinking, listen well. So first, bring the aloha, share your aloha, and the second, listen well. Um, this is true for everybody. I mean, we think of connecting with a trusted adult as something that we want our youth to do, right? One, because we want them turning to adults and not, and not to um, their friends, because um, that's their natural thing. But adults also need to turn to adults that they can trust, right? And so um, in many families, and I will say, um, until I started really talking about my work is in suicide prevention, this is what I do. Um, it was not okay to ask for help in my family. Um, it, was, it, uh, it was considered a sign of weakness by and large. Um, you don't ask for help. Um, if you did ask for help, people were like, get over yourself, suck it up, um, all those types of things. Um, and then I was like, oh, I work in this, this is important. And people came out of the woodwork to talk talk about getting help and needing help and approaching me for help, right? Um, so, it, so it is tough. And, um, and part of it is like, if you turn to somebody for help and then they give you that suck it up, that's not really very helpful and doesn't really lead you to want to get more help, right? We have to be able to turn to help and people say, yeah, yeah, I'm here with you and I'll go with you. So that's a message again, that we want to share with others. Um, we talked about yesterday what resilience means, right? And that's that having that caring connection, positive adult in your life. How can we get there? Um, and with our schools closed this last year, it's been even more important, right? Who is this person that they can turn to? Um, a lot of referrals did not come from schools in the online um, arena. Um, and so we actually saw more kids ending up with more serious um, impact because they were ending up in the emergency department rather than being referred through schools. Um, so again, we want to build this trusted adults. You can be a trusted adult. Um, they can be anyone, parents, older siblings, families, teachers, coach, faith leaders, employers, community members, anyone that a youth has contact with is able to become a trusted adult. So how can we build that? Well, we always talk about locally, you know, food is so important, right? Um, and so it, in, and it's been totally shown, uh, tons and tons of literature out there that just having meals together uh, builds those relationships. So for families um, in particular, three to four times, that's when that somewhere in there, that's where you break to the benefit side. So one meal a week together doesn't matter. Everyone thinks that this has to be dinner. And it has to be like, you have to sit down for dinner for an hour. It does not, it can be anything. Um, it doesn't have to be cooked. <laughs> you can go you know, to McDonald's or to wherever. I'm not saying any particular, I'm not endorsing any particular place. I'm just saying it's the fact that you're gonna have something to eat together, some kind of meal. Um, it doesn't even have to be a major meal. You can have a snack together. Um, I certainly know I have a, 
now 19 year old, but when he was in high school with all the sports and all the this and the that and the activities and oh my gosh, it was like, we did not have dinner together. He was eating dinner at the pool or dinner at the this and right. It was like, where is our dinner time? And so we just, we started having like a snack after he got home. Um, so it turned into like a little snack time. Um, not, not necessarily good for my weight to be eating at nine o'clock at night, but, <laughs> but good for the family <laughs> um, to be doing that and having that time. Um, and again, baking or takeout, whatever it is, three to four times, that's your break. Okay. So um, in just a moment, we're gonna do a little poll. I want you to all think about what it means to be that um, trusted adult and what those characteristics are. This is um, one of the activities that we actually do work on with our youth um, where they actually, sometimes they write job descriptions for trusted adults and they hand them out to their, to their adults. Um, but I think we know what these characteristics are. And if we think about them, um, and we're gonna put them out collectively, um, then that provides us that opportunity then to, to again, try to do better, try to get to that, that place, right? So, all right. So look at these great things that people are, are, have included. Um, the number one, just being caring. That comes off so well with you. They know, right? You've got to be real. They can recognize a faker a mile away, right? <laughs> if, if uh, so, and again, so trusted, caring, positive, calm, respectful, friendly, empathetic, right? These are some of the words being added, genuine, um, but you're seeing some of those saying genuine, um, interested, listening, kind, right? Encouraging, patient, good, non-judgmental, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, <laughs> These are the things that we're looking for. These are what our youth are looking for. Act your age, be accepting, being genuine. Um, I can't tell you how much the kids kind of laugh with me about some of the funny things that I say because I'm clearly much older than, than they are. Um, and, and when I say, you know, I, I, uh, oh, well, I've been involved in suicide prevention since 1987. Um, and they're like, uh, I think my mom wasn't even born, you know, <laughs> you know, like, so, okay, maybe that's true. That's great. But uh, so they definitely recognize these things. They recognize um, that you're there and you want to help. Um, and we need to build that. And I think it's a little bit harder. Sometimes I often say, um, my son may not turn to me, but all of his friends would, right? Because a lot of times where some of that stressors are coming from is probably our relationship and he needs to talk to someone else about it before he can talk to me about it. And that's okay, right? That's why we want more than one trusted adult. Thank you, um, Amanda. If you could pull that down, I'll share my screen again. Okay. So double activity in a row, woohoo. <laughs> Um, this next one is another activity that we've done. And again, it has to do with making these connections. Um, and so um, one of the things that we do, and we actually spend a, a number of sessions working with youth. Usually we pick a topic and we work on it for a full month and build um, and talk about that. Um, and most recently towards the end where they really understood, um, we started the You Belong um, pledge. Um, and this will be appearing on our Leeward Youth social media page. Um, uh, so what we're going to be doing um, is going to a jam board and I'll walk you through that. Um, but this is what the pledge says. I pledge to have the courage to encourage others to believe that my voice has the power to help others. I respect that we come from diverse families, cultures, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences. I commit to building strengths in my own life so that I can help others feel that they belong to our community. And then what we're asking you, and this is the one that I did with the kids, um, I am here for you to mentor, to listen, to guide, to help, to teach, to learn, to vibe, good and bad, to 
to laugh, to share, to care. And I picked a picture. And um, why don't we go ahead and open that up so everybody can see. Please feel free to go ahead and add. Um, you do have the link. And so you can tap into this and see what everybody's put down. Um, because for me, this is like so powerful um, to see what people are really pledging to do. Why are we here? What is this all about, right? Um, I am going to um, just make it on my own screen so I can see a little bit bigger. <laughs> I'm here to eat with you. Uh, <laughs> I pledge to be the voice for those that have lost the courage to use theirs. I'm appreciative of our connection and promise to give the care and concern you desire. I'm here to listen with empathy and without judgment, to create a space for those that are seeking help and want to be heard, to be aware of the resiliency of others that awakens when I am resilient. I'm here to listen with love. I'm here to help guide you in the right direction. I am here and will not give up on you. I'm here to listen and take the opportunity to help others. I'm here to listen and provide a safe space with no judgment, to practice kindness and compassion in my interactions with others and to be positive and inspire hope. I'm sorry, I'm just like, always gives me <laughs> chicken skin. Like it's so powerful, right, to hear. I will meet you where you are and find hope together. I am present and will listen with empathy without judgment. I'm strong, caring, and willing to help people. I am appreciative of our connection and promise to give you the care and concern you desire. I am here to share my aloha with you. Okay. Checking that they're not, sometimes people go to the last page. Oh, see some. <laughs> To be a better listener with my family and friends, with my ears, eyes, heart, mind, and with my undivided attention to be able to hopefully empathize and help. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm here to help guide in a positive direction, right? These, these words, are so inspiring they're so powerful and when you see them and over and over again and this is why our youth actually said they wanted to do this as a as a social media campaign as a story on instagram and it would be posted that way they're going to ask people to join their pledge so we have their pledges and asking people to join i mean you don't know who's going to speak to you right like if I'm struggling, some of these might really ring true for me. And I'll be like, whoa, who is this? I want that person. I'm going to reach out to that person because I think they understand me. Um, because it's going to be different for every single person, right? Some people are like, oh, that works for me. Or this is, you know, this is something that I want to do. Um, and that's, you're surrounded by so many caring people. We just forget that, right? We get so engulfed in our day-to-day -day lives that we don't, we don't realize that this is all around us, right? Our community is full of people that care and want to help. All right, so um, here's some of the things that our youth have said when we, again, when we ask them, what will offer you hope? That's what you just did with that you belong, right? We're offering hope um, by saying what we're there for. Um, everything is gonna be okay right now. Again, we talked about yesterday, like really being in the moment, not being future oriented, Brent, mentioned, you know, like you have to just be present for this moment and they get that. Right now is when they're there. The struggle is real and we need you. Just breathe. Um, I got you, right? Be kind to yourself. Accepting is needed. You are enough. So just a note about social media, if we're going to go this route, um, there is something called toxic positivity, people trying to be overly positive. If you're struggling, that does not feel real. Um, and there are things that people say, like only good vibes, right? Very different from saying best friend vibes, because with your best friend, you can be real, right? So best friend vibes sound like a really positive thing, but it's actually something that can be really real. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is a social media campaign. What it's all about, our youth in Waimanalo 
um, a few years ago. They did this project. If you knew someone thinking about suicide, what's something that you would say to them to give them hope? Today is hard, tomorrow be, will be harder, but only, but one day it will all get better. Again, let's focus on now. It's gonna be hard, but it'll get better. Here's my hands, I'll never let go, right? I, know, I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to know it gets better and I'm going to be here to help you. Here's one heart, hold it close to you. Every day promises a love that inspires. And with that, I'll open for questions. Or any. <laughs> we do have time for questions at the end, so I think we're okay to move forward. Um, but thank you so much, and I hope you gain something that you can take forward and practice. <laughs>